Hi, I'm David from Centre for Regenerative Agriculture and we're going to be doing some compost tea brew setups today. Uh, but we, before we get started on our compost tea brewing, the most important thing is the quality of the compost that we use. So we've got some compost uh, piles here that we made up and these were made with volunteers from Patagonia Ventura. Shout out to them, they help fund Centre for Regenerative Agriculture. So we, you know, here we've got compost that was made by uh, Patagonia volunteers and it's nice the moisture level is good we can take up a handful and squeeze it together and I get a drop I get a drop out yes there it goes and it holds together so it's like 50% uh, moisture level and we got worms in it yeah this is good it smells like forest floor mmm time you're composting you have to do this is balance the the greens with browns because if it was all just greens very quickly it would uh, go anaerobic you'd get a bacterial population that would build up and it would use all the available uh, oxygen and then it would go you'd only have anaerobic bacteria and and those are the ones that produce pathogens and we have this thing when we smell something that smells like uh, vomit or shit or dead bodies we move away from it and that's because they've got pathogens we've learned that evolution has brought that to us so that's one of the key things that when we smell compost we want it to smell like forest floor we want it to smell sweet we don't like to put a lot of uh, citrus rinds in because it's got antibacterial properties same with uh, onions but it all composts everything composts compost happens so we're we're just gonna put it all in there and see what happens but as I say the key thing is we'll look at under the microscope and so probably today we'll have a look at some of this under the microscope and you can get to see some of the biology that's in it on the screen on the big screen two months this should be at the level of this over here finished compost with no identifiable food waste in it. Here we've got stuff that you can't, you can't see any food waste in here. This is, uh, you know, completely broken down and has biology in it. So we built a compost pile, cubic yard, and mixture of greens and browns. We got it moist. We'll turn it three times. It'll be finished in about a couple of months, two months. But a really key part of our composting operation is that we give names to our piles and we're doing non-binary names at the moment. Uh, this is a combination of indie and jazz. This one is Kit. But today we decided, ladies, we're going to call this, this pile is going to be called Love. How nice is that? So we have a pile of love there. <laughs> Very nice. So we have our pump that needs to be higher than the actual pump when you put it in the water. And the reason being is because if it's lo this is lower, it'll the water will siphon into the motor again, and you don't want that to happen. Um, and then since it'll be going for quite some time, I'm going to bungee cord this together so that it stays pretty stable as it's aerating our our mixture. Here we are with our mini microbulator, and the mini microbulator is for the Homeowner, you can brew just under five gallons of actively aerated compost tea very easily with this equipment. So it's got a little air pump and it's got some plastics. And I think Camila showed you how to put that all together. So we're going to put in uh, two cups of our, our lovely uh, compost. We did sift it. So we're going to put one, two cups in. And we're not putting it in a bag, we're just going to put it in to solution and then we're going to put some foods in and we're trying to raise uh, um, a really uh, a fungally dominated brew here so we're going to use uh, um, kelp and we're going to put in two teaspoons of kelp and we're going to put in some fish and the whole fish is a, a fungal food and this uh, we're just going to put one spoon of this in. It's, it's quite smelly. You don't want to get it on your clothes. And then the humate, which I could have put in first. It's, um, humic acid is produced by compost. You can actually make it yourself. Um, and it complexes any chloramines that are in the water that might be put in by your water district. Uh, those are our foods that we're going to put in. We're also going to put in this uh, landscape mix, which is a mix of fish, feather, kelp, soy, and alfalfa. And that was 
just a little bit over to there and get it going. And it's got a, it's a, bit, a bit of a pulse like a, a waterfall and there's a lot of air exchange is going to occur at the surface. We're going to run this for about 18 hours and we'll come back and we'll use it on our plants tomorrow. We'll dilute it 50-50 and the goal is to use this on uh, perennials. So we'll be putting it around fruit trees. Okay, so uh, we've got another mini microbulator here all set up and we're going to run this one side by side uh, to compare the effects of two different foods and in this instance we're going to use the same uh, compost we're going to use two cups of our of our compost pile here and uh, again just putting it in um, without it being uh, in a bag and we're going to use humate again so we're going to put uh, two teaspoons of humate and then instead of uh, a more complex uh, carbohydrate like um, kelp or whole fish, in this instance we're going to use um, molasses. And we're going to use blackstrap molasses, organic, unsulfured. It's a simple carbohydrate, simple sugar. And so much more of a uh, bacterial food source. And this would be if we're trying to feed um, annual vegetables, you know, your lettuce crop will do well with this. And then we're also going to put in one teaspoon of fish emulsion with kelp. So there is a little bit of kelp in there, but the fish emulsion is more of a bacterial food too. So two cups of compost. Oops, is this going to come out? I think it's got stuck. Let's see if we can get that out. There we go. And we've got to put a bungee on it. There we go. So we're, uh, we took a sample from our uh, compost and uh, just a, a small amount and we diluted it about one to ten. We're not actually doing a quantitative analysis today so it doesn't actually matter the dilution. Um, we're doing a qualitative analysis just to see what we've got in our compost and so I'm just doing this gentle agitation to get the biology that's in those uh, soil aggregates to go into solution and then we'll put one drop on a uh, microscope slide and we'll have a look at it. So we're looking at low power and particularly I'm looking for nematodes uh, or microarthropods at this level. Um, hopefully we'll get it up on the screen soon and you'll see uh, what I'm looking at. But I'm looking at low power, which is 40x, 40 times at the moment. And I'm not seeing any nematodes. And I'm not seeing any microarthropods yet. Yeah, we're going to assess the, the soil food web presence in our compost. So this is just our, our raw compost sample. Uh, looks like a fungal hyphae to me. I don't see any cross walls. It's pretty wide. Um, it's it's light. It's not necessarily super, but that is that's the sort of thing we're looking for is fungal hyphae. Oops. Testate amoeba. Can get those under a higher power. So we we're just looking for the presence of of um, beneficial members of the soil food web. What we don't want to see, for instance, is ciliates which occur in anaerobic conditions. If we see flagellates here, that would be great. But we commonly in our compounds, compost see testate amoeba. And the test is a shell. So this is a shelled amoeba. Usually when 
folks remember amoeba, they think about amoeboid movements and they put out pseudopodia and everything, but these ones actually are, are inside a shell. So uh, we've got a test eight amoeba up there and uh, this is under uh, times 400 now, so pretty high power. Um, but everything you see on the screen, the, the smallest things on the screen are, uh, are bacteria. And they're one micron across, you know, 10 to the minus six of a meter. So it gives you an idea of, of the size of this, which, which might be 20 microns across. So certainly a representative member of the soil food web that we want to see in our sample. Let's see what else we can find. Lots of tested amoeba. Wow. And this is just from one drop of a diluted uh, sample, one to 10 dilution. Camila, ton of uh, <laughs> tested amoeba in there, more than we usually see. Eh? Yeah, so, definitely yeah. more than we usually see in one drop. Lots of tested amoeba in this one. So uh, not actually a lot of fungal hyphae so far. Um, so this compost might be more suitable for uh, bacterial um, use, you know, for uh, putting on annual vegetables, for instance. Yeah, the, oh, the, the aggregates. aggregates. Yeah, let's, here's an aggregate. Oh, there's one. Yeah, there's a nice. So here's a uh, picture of aggregate, and there's actually a testate amoeba, it looks like, right under it. Um, so when we see the, the fungal hyphae, the long strands in the, under the microscope, that usually means that the soil is healthy because it's binding all those these aggregates together in the soil and creating aerated soil so that it's not compact and so it has space for all the movement and critters to move through. We yes. got a aggregate formation with our the bacteria and fungi glue together particles and form aggregates and healthy soil should look like black cottage cheese. And so we've got, uh, here's aggregate formation. And we've also got the color, which we're looking for a color that's 70% dark chocolate. This one's a, is a little bit lighter. So there might be some unfinished, um, humate is 70% dark chocolate and fulvates are more like milk chocolate. We'll brew 275 gallons. And this is how much biology there is in one drop. And so when you, you scale that up, what we're doing when we add compost tea is adding a huge amount of biology to the soil. And that key thing is our understanding of how plants grow biologically is that they feed the soil, they take carbohydrates, the, uh, you know, carbon dioxide out the atmosphere, make it into carbohydrates, pump it out into the root area, the rhizosphere. And, and that's where the biology uh, congregates because it's being fed. And so you have the biology, you want to have the biology in the soil. And a lot of soils that have been depleted or been treated chemically don't have biology in them. So that's where the compost tea comes in. You really can't separate soil and plants. Although you can make uh, soil with um, organic matter breaking down, you know, you know, decaying organic matter, it's really the plants that are the key feeders of soil. They have, um, it's liquid carbon they're taking out of the atmosphere and they're pumping it into the ground. And, and plants are nature-based climate solutions. So let's plant more plants. I'm looking for a, a fungal hyphae. See if I can find a nice one here somewhere. Please. Well, there really is a lot of, of testate amoeba action here. I may have mentioned that already. <laughs> I'd like to see fungal hyphae, fungal hyphae. 30% of the carbon in, in soil is actually the glues that fungal hyphae produce, uh, glomalin. And they glue together particles of soil. So, so fungi and bacteria hold together soil. And if you don't have that in the soil, then you, you don't have soil aggregates. What you've got is dead dirt then. But here you can actually see an aggregate beside a fungal hyphae. I know it's a fungal hyphae. It's quite broad, it's got color, it's got a cross wall right there. And then it's going right through the middle of uh, a soil aggregate, which has some uh, bacteria moving around in the side. Not a surprise, very common. Um, but the fungal hyphae is the key thing that's, that's really in there in that uh, soil aggregate. All right. So we did a few different things today. Uh, we caught some of it on video. We made a compost pile. Uh, we set up some compost tea brewers and we had a look at some things under the microscope. So what we've got in a couple of months is we're gonna have finished compost, more finished compost to work with. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna to have a couple of gallons of compost tea that we fed with different uh, foods to compare under the microscope. 
And then what we saw under the microscope is that the compost that we've got here has fungal hyphae in it, has a lot of testate amoeba in it. So there's a lot of biology in our compost. It's active living compost that we're then going to spread out on the landscape through these actively aerated compost tea. And really the big picture is this is a technique of regenerative agriculture that is uh, a nature-based climate solution. It's taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, putting it into the ground, that's what, what plants do. And in order to be healthy, they're feeding the biology that's in the soil and that biology is feeding them. The carbohydrates that plants put into the ground are the food for the biology and the biology is reproducing, is defecating, is dying, and it's producing the nutrients that plants need all in that crucial zone, the rhizosphere. Anyway, so this is one of a series that we're putting together for Center for Regenerative Agriculture. If you want to come and check it out, it's ohicra.org, and hopefully we'll put it at the bottom on a little banner. But check it out. We've got a lot of different resources on the website, and come and watch some other of our videos. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.